God. Amen. The Lord is good. And his mercy endure forever. Thank the Lord for his faithfulness and thank God for what he's yet doing. Amen. It's an exciting day. Amen. I'm excited uh, to see another day that God has created and made for us to enjoy. And it's a blessing to, uh, to be with you uh, through this broadcast this morning. And uh, we're just excited because uh, the Lord is still reigning and ruling. And we're learning how to put our trust in him day by day. And um, many of you have heard me say this, and I truly believe this, that this is a day that we've never seen before, even though we call it Sunday. And in that, we have to remember, like the scripture said, this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad therein. So basically, it's where we put our faith in what God says. And he has proven himself to be faithful to those who put their trust in him. And uh, we're just excited about uh, what God is doing in your life, also in my life, and also uh, what God is doing even in the areas where we're not sure what he's yet doing, but he's still in control. Amen. So many of you may not know who I am. My name is uh, Ron Harrison. Uh, I am uh, the apostle of uh, Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, which means I've been sent. I've been sent by God, amen, to build uh, the people with a heart after God by the information that we're sharing with you guys and our ministry amen is designed amen to help grow us up in in faith and in relationship with god and teaching us four things that's one one of the four things is teaching us who we are in christ and uh what we have received in christ how to appropriate the word of god in everyday living and how to be an effective witness to those who are lost so our body is so the ministry is for the body of christ you know so today even as we begin to share the word the bible says he that have an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church and the word church means ecclesia called out once so it's talking about those who have received jesus as lord and savior uh, of uh, their lives we're part of the body of christ so therefore we're all one according to the scripture and the building doesn't define us who we are but our relationship with christ does so I hope you're excited about the word of faith that we'll be sharing with you today. Uh, what I need for you to do, basically, I need you to get your Bibles or your uh, electronic devices, amen, whatever you have your Bible app or porn. If you have the Bible app, you can use that, amen, on your phone. And I just need you to follow along with me as I share a word of faith that I think that will bless you because it truly has blessed me and turned things that I've learned over the years and God has entrusted me with by revelation and understanding and learning how to walk that out. Is all part of what God wants us to grow in Christ and grow into our understanding, amen, of how to operate in a kingly way while we're still here in the earth. So um, I hope you're excited. As I said, um, I do want to thank you guys for uh, taking the time to, uh, after this broadcast is over with, and if it's touched your heart in any way, if you want to financially support the ministry, there's information uh, on the Facebook page that you can actually take and take that information and, and you can use it to be able to sow the seed that you would like to sow. We appreciate that. Amen. All this going towards to help build on our future and actually getting the word of faith out to others that need it, that can help them in this time of pandemic that we're in. And, and we believe that God's going to bless us to do that. So what I'm going to do is pray at this time. And I hope you got... Um, a tablet, something you can write this information down. And again, if you've been blessed by the word of faith that we're going to share with you today, make sure you share with somebody else because Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we need a word, amen, that would nourish our spirit, man, and have the right mindset, amen, how to, how to operate through these negative times that we're experiencing even now in Jesus' name. So let's go before the Lord and let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you and honor your presence for our time together. We pray for those who are part of the broadcast, uh, that you would bless them, and even those who are part of Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, and even those who are partnering with us in ministry. We pray in Jesus' name that you continue, amen, to open up our ears so we can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church through your word, and help us, amen, have the faith that we need to take us through these negative times, amen, that people have lost interest in your word, and also and even in you. So Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you just have your way. We yield ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We ask the Holy Spirit to come, take this vessel of clay, use it for the glory of God, to feed your sheep and feed your lambs. And Lord, we'll forever give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. This we pray and ask in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And I will say amen, which means so be it. And it is so. So today we're going to be talking about your faith is like currency. Your faith is like currency that's what we're going to be talking about today and um, i don't know god's been dealing with me about this in a powerful way because god interacts with us as people of faith 
through faith. There's two types of faith. Amen. There's one faith that talks about faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And uh, we're pretty much solid on that because a lot of people know in order to have faith, you have to first believe the word of God and what God says about himself in terms of what he did in terms of redemption and how he sent forth his son and how our condition can change by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. But the other thing is, is that there's another faith and that faith has to deal with our faith, our faith. So today we're going to talk about our faith basically is like currency. And if you understand the currency is how we buy how we buy things or exchange things. Uh, without currency, we lack the ability to have goods. Uh, so the thing, and when we talked about our faith is like currency. Uh, so we're going to show you a scripture, I think, that will help build a bridge to this and help you understand that there's something that you and I can give God that he can respond to. And in that, there's a transaction that would be in our trans. There's a transaction. That's a good word. There's a transaction that would take from him to us and how we receive the promise of God for our life. Now, this is powerful because a lot of people don't understand that in the Bible, it says that the thief come to kill, steal and destroy. And I've said this many a time when Jesus said that he was really talking about something that we have that's valuable as believers that the enemy is trying to steal. Because if he can steal the ability of us to use our faith, God can't really respond to us. And the transaction that needs to take place in terms of the promises he has for us can't really come manifested in our life. So, uh, again, let's go a little bit further as we begin to expound on this. Now, let's go over to 1 Peter, amen. And many of you know we talked about Peter, amen, uh, his uh, ability to grow in God because of the things he had to experience as being a disciple, the word disciple means a student, a pupil, or a trainee. So he had to grow his faith, amen, grow his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, he became a great leader. And God has put a seed of faith in us. And that seed of faith in us is designed to grow also. And it grows by us understanding how we are supposed to interact with that, with our faith tied to God's word. Now, it says here in 1 Peter chapter number 1, let's go to verse number 3. It says, blessed is the God, the father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, this is first Peter. This is first Peter chapter number one, verse number three. Now we're at verse number four to inherit the incorruptible and undefiled, the phase not away reserved in heaven for you. The fifth verse says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. Remember, we talked about last week, now is salvation. So salvation has to be a deal with the promises of God through the word of covenant that God's given us through the word of faith. That is for those, amen, in this life, the promises are for this life and also for the next life. We talked about that in 1 Timothy 4 and 8, where it says physical training is of some value, but spiritual training is valuable to all things, and it holds the promises of this life and that which is to come. So again, it's through faith, amen, that how we do that. Our faith, that's the part where we're talking about, because our faith is like currency. Now it goes on here and says here, it says in the fifth verse, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed, it says, in the last times. The uh, sixth verse says, we're in time, we're, we're in, you greatly rejoice through now for a season, you need to be in heaviness though manifold temptation. Then it says that the trials of your faith, this is the first we want to key on, that the trials of your faith being more precious than of gold, that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found into the praise and the honor and the glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now, it talks about here in the seventh verse, it talks about our faith will be on trial. And trial, the file, our faith being on trial has to deal with being tempted or temptation. Temptation is a lot of time is driven by the, the, uh, the enemy, amen, and the enemy is uh, uh, the uh, spiritual forces that work against us to tempt us, to pull us out of faith, our faith out of what God says and who he says and what he's called us to be. You remember Matthew chapter number four, the Bible says that Jesus was fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And then, then the Bible says that the tempter came. Jesus, I mean, Jesus was tempted by the devil. Well, the devil, amen, he speaks, amen. He was speaking to Jesus and asking him the question, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. So remember, temptation is not sin, 
Temptation is really an introduction to pull you away from something that you're standing in, which is your faith and your confidence in God that causes you the ability to establish your faith. Now, I like what Jesus said, because when the enemy speaks a lie, you have to speak back to what he says. And Jesus said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, that's a lesson within itself, but we're not going to mess with that. But the point that I'm giving you in this verse here. And the key verse is one to seven. It says that your the trials of your faith. So, so we're going to be tempted or tested by the enemy to influence us to get out of our position of faith. Now we'll go a little bit further as we begin to talk, touch on this, because this is important because the enemy knows that if you don't know how to operate in what God has given you, you can't really execute from your faith in terms of what needs to happen in terms of get the transition or the transaction that needs to come forth in your life. So God can manifest part of that salvation promise he has for you in this life. Now, as it goes on, it says here, it says that it says that your uh, that your uh, faith is com compares our faith into being more precious than gold. Now, you know, before we had uh, paper currency, gold was a, a means, a medium where we're, transactions were taking place because of gold. And because what this is saying here, your faith is compared to gold, but it's more precious than gold. So again, uh, faith is a, is a key element for us to establish our ability to, to choose and to believe is a choice that God's given us based upon the information that he gives us to draw us to that information so we can understand how to begin to operate in the faith realm. Because this is important, as we said, and you'll hear me say that this is important. I'm just repeating myself because, again, the emphasis right now, even when the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, it says the just shall live by faith. So it's our ability to believe God, amen, and, and not be tempted, amen, to fall away from him because of fear or doubt or unbelief or questioning the even the very presence of God because what he's done already in our life. Now, as we move a little bit further, amen, in the kingdom, in the kingdom, our faith is or our faith in the God's word is how we receive what is rightfully ours. Now, this is important. And I say that again. You're going to hear me say that again. This is important because there's a lot of key points that I'm pointing out that are very important that you need to see law and pause upon and meditate on and see whether or not it's true. If it's true, then you need to reposition yourself to understand to hold on. Remember I said last week, when we learn the value of what we have received, we won't try to replace what's already valuable. See, most time, a lot of times if we don't value, we don't hold on to it and we don't hold on to it to invest in it so it can begin to be more uh, uh, precise in our life because we're holding on something that's very valuable and your faith is valuable. You're, you, you're, you have the ability to believe and choose is the most powerful thing that you have. And the enemy wants you to be deceived so you won't choose rightly so he can keep you in bondage. And we're here to let you know that Jesus has set us free so we don't have to be in bondage. But how we walk from there on out, we have to learn how to build our faith day by day in, ter terms, in terms of believing and trusting in the Lord and what he has for us in Jesus' name. Now, we're talking about your faith is being more precious than gold. Let's talk about what is our faith. Our faith has to deal with three elements. And this is, an, again, the three elements are this. You need to write this down. Because when you break down faith, our faith, it's going to be revealed or the elements of faith or the three elements has to deal with, I call the three C's. The three C's has to deal with your confidence in God, your confession in God, and your obedience to God. So it's the two C's and the O. So it's C-C-O, it's not C-C-C. <laughs> Amen. So it's our confidence in God, our confession in God, and our obedience to God. So when you can, when you trace this, you'll find out that faith, our faith our, our, is being revealed through these three elements, our confidence in God, our confession in God, our obedience to God, the CCO. Now, let's go over to Matthew chapter number nine, and let's see if we can get some examples out of the Bible. In Matthew chapter number nine, and verse number, let me see where we want to go. Let's go to verse number 20, verse number 20, uh, nine and 20. In Matthew nine and 20, Jesus is with his disciples, and he's on a healing campaign here. And the Bible says in Matthew 9 and 20, 
and behold, a woman which was diseased and issued of blood for 12 years, it says here, came behind him, came behind Jesus now. And it said she touched, uh, excuse me, came behind him. Let me get where I'm, where I need to be. Okay. Yeah. Came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, now this is meditation. She's already meditating and confessing mentally uh, what she's going to expect in terms of getting a transaction of healing out of Jesus into her. And it says here, for she said within her, if I may but touch the hem, or touch his garment, I shall be made whole. So now we have a faith statement. And the faith statement, remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence not seen. So she understands that Jesus has everything she needs, but in order for her to get that transaction, she's have to use her faith. And this is this again is important because the enemy doesn't want believers to understand how to operate in the realm of faith. And our faith has to deal with our confidence in God, our confession, and our obedience. Now, the scripture says here, she had already meditated upon what she believed. Then she said, if I can much touch the if I can just touch the hymn of his God, he shall be made whole. Look at the 22nd verse. And Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Wait a minute. Your, her faith made her whole. I, mm, her faith made her whole. Her confidence in what Jesus had, her confession in what Jesus was going to give her, and her obedience in terms of her touching him and not he touching her. That's, that's powerful because this woman actually is operating in, in, in a realm of faith that that Jesus, amen, he, he didn't just stop and expound upon, but he did in another part of the scripture. He talked about, amen, it talks about how it was a crowd of people around him. And this woman, amen, was crawling on the ground to get to Jesus because she had purposely made a choice to believe and the belief moved her to action. And she said, when I touch him, amen, the transaction is going to be healing will come in my body based upon my faith. Her faith is what we talk about. Our faith is our confidence in God. So we see that she had confidence. We see that she had a confession and the obedience. She moved, amen, to get to where he was. Now, with this being said, uh, what's taking place here is that Jesus, in the other uh, scriptures it talks about, in other gospels, it talks about the crowd of people around him. And somebody asked his disciples, uh, Jesus said, who touched me? And somebody, one of the disciples said, all these people around here, what are you talking about who touched you? You got all these people touching you. But there was another touch. There was a touch of faith, faith that responded, amen, her faith that responded in terms of what belonged to her, amen, through Jesus Christ. She was able to make that transaction because of her faith. So this builds the fact that what we're saying that our faith is, is like currency, amen. So if our faith has not been developed, even though what we need is there, you can't, the transaction can't be made because we don't have the proper currency and which is the faith currency that we need in order to get what God has for us. I hope that's making sense to you. Let's go to another one. Let's look at, we're already in Matthew chapter number nine. Let's go to verse number 27. Amen. In verse number 27, it's Matthew 9 and 27. It says, and when Jesus departed, then two blind men followed him crying, saying, Lord, blind, blind men. Listen, there, let me read this. Let me slow down. And when Jesus, because I'm getting excited, when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy upon us. All right? So you can hear their confession. They're confessing. Amen. They're confessing. Amen. So it says here, it says, And when he was come unto the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe that I am able to do this. And they said, Yea, Yea, Lord. Now, this is interesting. Jesus has already received the anointing upon him to heal the sick, to open up the blind eyes, uh, to heal the brokenhearted. And we know that he's carrying all this. Amen. He has the ability to represent heaven here on earth. 
and what we need, amen, he was simply saying that you you need healing. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to get healing. You can get it here, amen. So he knows that's all because of sin. Sin is a result of the Adam sin nature, and because of that, he's come to write it right because he's the son of God, amen, amen. The word made flesh, and he has come down to show forth heaven here on earth that he can receive healing and deliverance for those who believe and trust in him. Now, the question is, is that here, he said here in the verse, and let's just look at this, when they brought these blind men in the house, amen, Jesus looked at them and said, he said, do you believe that I'm able to what? To do this. So in other words, why is he, if he had the healing to be able to override their faith, he would just went ahead and healed them. But need, Jesus knows that there's a, there's a law that's put forth in the earth that God can't move unless we have faith for it. And sometimes that faith is given unto us through his word, but then we have a choice to believe that. So here he tests them to say, basically, do you know that I can heal you? I'm able to heal you. I've got healing right here for you, but do you have the faith to make the transaction so I can give it to you? Mm, my, 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 my. So basically what they said, they said to him, yea, Lord, Yea, Lord. And then the Bible said, then he touched, he touched, he touched their eyes and saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. That is powerful. That is power. According to your faith, be it unto you. Because you, because I question you, you came, I knew your condition. I knew you was blind. I had the ability to heal you, but I need basically your permission. Your permission is your currency in terms of you having a confidence in what I'm carrying. Can you confess that I'm able to do it? And that because of your obedience coming in the house, amen, because why come in the house if you ain't going to receive what's in the house? He's already in the house, but you got to come in the house in order to get it. But once you get in there, there's other degrees in which you need to take place in order to receive it and it can be manifested in your life. So big in there. So now when they confess a yeah, Lord, then we have the transaction taking place. Healing immediately comes upon them, brothers, and they're healed in Jesus' name. Whew, my, my, my. The Bible says in Mark 9 and 23 that all things are possible to them that believe. Could it be that some people are walking around lacking as body of believers because we haven't developed our faith and getting our, because we're confessing the wrong things. We don't have confidence that God can do it and our obedience because it's, sometimes if you're not walking in obedience, that means you're not in the position where God needs you to be in order for him to receive what you have for him. So remember, we're talking about our faith consists of three things, which talks about our confidence in God, our confession in God and obedience to God. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go over to Hebrews chapter number six. And as we go over to Hebrews chapter number six, you're going to look at uh, the process of how we receive, amen, what God has for us in this life as well as the next. Because right now, the whole mindset that I believe that God is testing us as believers is where is your faith? Where is your confidence? Where is your confession? Where is your obedience? Because once again, we understand how to operate and develop these three things, then the transaction of what we need can be manifested because God has already had it made it available for us through Jesus Christ, but he needs the currency of our faith to be in alignment with his will so we can receive what he has for us. That's a word for somebody to receive because somebody's waiting on God and God's waiting on for you to develop your confidence in him. And that's through prayer, amen. That's through asking and believing and trusting in his word. And also it goes back to also our confession because sometimes we need to confess Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She confessed before she received her healing. She confessed before she received her healing. She saw herself healed before she touched Jesus. Sometimes you got to see yourself get that job before you... You got to see yourself get that job before you get the job. Sometimes you got to see yourself, amen, your business being prosperous before you see the business, I mean plan even being brought up forth out yet you have to see those things mentally amen because that builds up what we call hope and hope is expectation for favorable change amen even in this turn this pandemic that we're in you have to have faith to believe amen that god's going to take care and protect you and your family from this unknown disease and this and that god has a covering over him you have to believe that even now, because it's by faith that we believe it, and faith is opens the door for God to make the transaction to bring that covering that you need because you're not operating in fear, doubt, or unbelief. 
And if you have fear, doubt, and belief, you said, Lord, you know, help me. You haven't given me the spirit of fear, but you give me the spirit of love and power and the sound mind. That's the confession. And when you confess that enough, then you get it in your mind to believe that. And therefore, you don't have to live your life in a bubble. I hope you're getting something out of this. Hebrews chapter number six, verse number 12. It says here, Hebrews 6 and 12. I'll read it out of two versions. The first version I'll read out is the King James. It says, that you be not slowful, but followers of them who through faith and patience. Now you need to understand that faith and patience, amen, are like sisters and brothers. In other words, we're talking about the elements. Now this has to deal with your conduct. Your conduct has to deal with how you position yourself so you can receive what God has for you. So it's through faith and patience that we inherit the promises of God. In other words, if you're in a hurry to receive what God has for you, most of the time you're not going to receive it because God's timetable is not on your timetable. And a lot of times while we're in the position of, of, of waiting is that God is developing our faith, what we call trust. And trust means you would rely upon something even though the manifestation is not there yet. You still rely upon it. The woman kept saying, if I can touch, touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Amen. And the blind men, amen, they confessed and they said, yes, Lord, we know that you're able. Amen. So even uh, if time it, it tries to uh, evade, invade, time tries to invade and erode your ability to lose your confidence in God, as well as your confession and your obedience, and then we give up. And then, therefore, there's nothing there to make the transition with transaction with. And now the enemy has stole from you your ability to receive what God has for you. That's why the Bible said with faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. You can't be in a hurry for what God has for you. His timing may not be your timing, but you know he's not going to end on a negative. So, therefore, you hold in faith and believe that God is going to, amen, provide the thing that you believe in him for. Amen. In Jesus' name. Now let's go to another scripture. Go to Hebrews chapter number four. And Hebrews chapter number four and verse number one and two is another example I wanted to share with you. And I just didn't read, I didn't read that out of the Amplify for time's sake. But if you get a chance, go back and read what I just read over in Hebrews chapter number six, verse number 12 and the Amplify version. It really begins to expound on that a little, little bit more so you can grab more meaning out of that. So here it says here, it says, let us therefore uh, fear least a promise of being left of us entering into his rest that any of you should seem short of it. Now, this is talking about the children of Israel. We're going to read this and amplify that, this verse I just read. So I want you to hear this. It says, therefore, will the promises of entering his rest still hold and is offered today. The rest is offered today. Let us be afraid to distrust it. At least any of you should think should come short, come too late and has come short of reaching it. Now, when we say the rest, rest points to God's promises. The promises are in Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, all the promises are in him are yea and amen. And remember, we talked about that scripture, 1 Timothy 4 and 8, amen, that the promise of God are developed before us in this life and also the next. So there's some things that we have need of in terms of protection, provision, and peace is still provided for us, not when we get to heaven, but right now. But you got to have faith for it. If you don't have faith for it, in other words, if you don't have what? Your, your confidence in place to believe that it is true. And if you don't confess it to come to you. And the other thing is, if you don't have obedience in terms of believing what God says and turning how we receive it, it won't come because we're operating now what we call fear, doubt, and belief. Fear, doubt, and belief will cancel out your transaction. And that's what the enemy, he wants to cancel out God's ability to prove himself to you in this life, uh, how faithful he is and how he can yet be our Lord, our, our shield, our comforter, our peace, our healer, our lawyer, everything we need, our provider, amen. He is there working with us to see that we get the victory and everything we need to do. And that's pointed to the, the rest. The rest has to do with the promises. The promises are tied to the kingdom of God. And Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his, his, what, his righteousness. And then all these other things, when this is all these other things, he's talking about the rest. He's talking about the promises will be what? 
added unto you. So he wants to add, amen, the things that we try to struggle and do in our own strength. He wants to give us the ability to have the power to receive it, amen, through his word as we use our faith to make the transaction, to complete the transaction so it can come to us in Jesus' name. Glory to God. That's a good word. Now listen what this says in the Amplified, in the second verse, the second verse, it says, for indeed we have the glad tidings of the gospel of God proclaimed to us through uh, truly as they, the Israelites of old did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came unto them and the message they heard did not benefit them, it says, because it was not mixed with faith. It was not mixed with, in other words, the word of faith is God's promise to us but if we don't take the word of faith and believe it, that's our faith now. And, and then our faith, amen, completes the concurrency, or, uh, completes the transaction, I'm sorry. It completes the transaction and manifestation to come into our life. So here it says here, because it was not their faith, it says it was not mixed with faith. And because it wasn't mixed with faith, with leaning on, then it breaks down what faith is, leaning on the entire personality of God in absolute trust, it says here. It says not only absolute trust, but confidence. See, that's where I got that, amen, that the, our faith has to deal with our confidence, our confession, and our obedience. Then here it says, in his power, wisdom, goodness, by those who heard it, it says, neither were they united in faith with the ones Joshua and Caleb who heard and did believe. Now, this is powerful because he said, listen, he said, all of you heard the same word. In other words, I delivered you up out of out of Egypt, and God said, "What's the use of delivering you uh, delivering you out of Egypt, and you don't have a place that you can call home?" So He began to build uh, the faith for them to go to this place called Canaan Land. And the Bible says in the Book of Numbers, I think it is verse number thirteen, and when they sent the spies out, Amen. God said, "Go spy out the land, spy out, see what the people are like, but and see everything I told you." Amen. So He told them by faith that there's a place, amen, flowing with milk and honey because why God delivered them out of the, the, uh, Egypt, he began to now take them through the wilderness to test their faith now, to see whether they're going to believe in what he said and then get them to the place, amen, they had to cross Jordan because Jordan, when they crossed Jordan, they're going to go right into Canaan land. And the Bible says that when the spies came back, 10 brought, came back with the evil report. Now what God calls evil is when you don't agree with him. He said, I, I'm going to send you over there and, and the land's going to be just what I said. Everything is there and provided for you. And I'm going to see that you obtain that regardless of who occupies that land. Because the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Canaanites or whoever this lived there thought they owned the land, but it belonged to the Lord. And therefore, if God is the Lord, if he's the uh, Lord over it, Therefore, God came in, he can, change, he can change who occupies that place because he is the landlord over that land. So he chooses to give the land to the children of Israel. But when it came back, they brought back, 10 brought back an evil report. And the evil report was simply this. They changed, amen, they, they changed from saying that we can't go in because the people are much bigger than we are. And we can't, go, we're not able to go in because of these people. But they forgot who brought them up out of Egypt. Who brought you out of Egypt? God. Why did he bring you out of Egypt? Because he's going to bring you to a place of rest and promises. The rest and promises, he's going to take you there. You can't take him there, but he's going to, you can't, listen, He. you got to need, you need him in order for to do it, but you can't have him unless you believe and put your faith and trust in him. But the Bible said Joshua and Caleb brought back a good report. That means they had a different spirit. And that spirit, amen, if you look at it in the book of Numbers, amen, I already told you, I think it's Numbers 13, 26, and then goes into uh, chapter number 14, 1 and 2. It talks about how Joshua and Caleb had another spirit. And that word spirit has talked about their human spirit. Amen. Not the Holy Spirit. Their spirit had been, my God, their spirit had gotten to a place to have confidence in God, their confession. And they were ready to go in. Amen. Despite the 10 other people. Now, this is important because you cannot build faith based upon the majority of what other people are doing. You have to build faith according to your faith because sometimes the two can go in and the other 10 and also because of the multitudes didn't believe 
what Joshua and Caleb said. They went in terms of believing uh, how many people, amen, believe. So we got 10 versus two. So we're going to believe what the 10 says and not believe what Joshua and Caleb say. So faith has nothing to do with numbers in, in terms of how many people you believe and how many people you following. It has to, it has to be us believing in one thing and what we're believing in is our faith according to what Jesus has done for us as born again believers here in the earth. And we have the power to possess what he has for us as we develop our faith, which has to deal with our confidence in God, our obedience to God, amen, our confession, our confidence, our, 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 not only our confidence in God, but our confession and our obedience, amen, is how we get that transaction being made and being done in Jesus' name. Because your faith is more precious than that is gold, even though it's tried by fire. Now, now here it says here as we read on this this is as we read on that it talks about a man that they could not enter in because the word was not mixed with faith that's that's the that's the test the word was not mixed with faith the word was not mixed with their faith the word was not mixed with their faith see god all things are possible to them that believe so what god has for us has been made available for us but you got to have faith for it in other words, when Jesus told the woman, thy faith has made thee whole, he's simply telling her, you're the, you're the reason why you got this transaction. In other words, fear, doubt, and unbelief didn't block you from receiving what I have. Matter of fact, you're the only one in the Bible, amen, that I didn't lay hands on, amen, you laid your hand on me. Oh my God, that's good stuff right there. Yeah, yeah, because usually Jesus, amen, he laid his hands on the blind man, amen, he usually lays his hands on, on people, but here he didn't even touch her. She touched him. And our faith today can still touch him through the promises that are found in him to receive and get that transaction being manifested in our life before we actually see the manifestation because we operate in faith. We're calling those things that not as though they were. Because when the Bible says, by his stripes, we are already healed. So in other than that, listen, provisions, protection, and peace is still made available for us now as we operate and use the currency of our faith to get the transaction in alignment so we can receive it. This is good. I'm almost done here, but I hope you got that. So we talked about faith and patience is how we receive the promises of God. And we talked about, uh, when we talk about the promises of God, there's some of them are listed in 2 Peter chapter number one, verse number two. 2 Peter chapter number one and verse number two, it kind of lists, lists some things in the Amplified. It really blows it up. And it talks about the list, some of the promises that we can obtain. Remember when we talked about rest, the rest points to the promises of God. Rest points to the promises of God. Rest points to the promises of God. Uh, there's a scripture that comes to mind as we're talking even now. In Matthew 11 and 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Well, the first rest is salvation or uh, being born again. And once we get saved and born again, now we moved in a place of entitlement. And the entitlement that we have is the inheritance. The inheritance that we receive are the promises in this life as well as the next. Now, how we obtain those promises has to do with the next verse, which is Matthew 11 and 29. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. So learning how to operate in faith or using your faith, because it's according to your faith that God's going to respond to you through the promises of God to receive the manifestation that God has for you. Amen. And it's through faith and patience how we obtain those things. So I'm here to tell you, you don't have to wait anymore. You just got to start getting your faith in order so you can believe what God has for you and then be operating in that on a daily basis. Then God will respond to you in his timetable to manifest. Amen. If it's a job that you need, if it's healing that you need, if you need restoration in every way, in every in any, every form and every way, he'll make it happen. But here's some list that God, that he talked about that is very needful, even in this pandemic that we're walking in. He talked about one of the promises, perfect well-being. Amen. Perfect, perfect well-being, not in need of anything, not needing anything, you know, not worried about anything. Anxiety, worry and fear and doubt and belief is a result of doubt, doubt, doubt has to be, has to do with we, we don't really believe. So if we really believe that God, amen, will remove those things and he still can, dot can come upon us, but it doesn't have to stay there because of our identity being in Christ and us using our confession and using our what? Not only our confidence in God, our confession and our obedience, it'll be removed. And sometimes it's removed by prayer. 
because the Bible says in Philippians chapter number four, it talks us, it talks about how we need to pray and, and, and ask God, amen, for whatever we need, cast all our cares upon him because what he cares for us. And that word care means to worry. So I don't have to worry around carrying, carrying it. He's giving me uh, information how to get it off of me. And that's through prayer. Amen. And then believe, amen, and believe that he's doing the operation and what he needs to do in terms of that prayer. The other one is uh, promising he perfect well-being, all necessary good. That's the second one. And then this is all spiritual prosperity. That's the third one. Because spiritual prosperity is a key piece right there. Spiritual prosperity. And then this here's another one. The fourth one is this freedom from fear and agitation, passions, and moral conflict. Amen. So this is just a list of things that he talks about. There's more when Peter said these things, not only that, that are listed, can be multiplied unto us as believers. Mm -hmm. It can be multiplied unto us as believers. In other words, the peace that you have can be multiplied. The prosperity that God wants to give you spiritually and naturally can be multiplied. In other words, what God gives us, he wants to be multiplied because once it's multiplied, it's multiplied to, to the degree that some, not we just have it ourselves, we can share it with others. Now, is, I'm going to end with this because this is uh, John 10, I think it is, John 10 and 10 part B. And I want you to, for time's sake, I'm just going to quote this, but you can look at it later. It says, but uh, when Jesus said, the thief come to kill, steal, and destroy, he says here, I came that they may have life. Or it says in Amphi, I came that they may have and enjoy life. Can we enjoy life during this pandemic? Heaven says yes. And you say, well, how can that be? Because God is going to do something spiritually that will have us, amen, a, a spiritually a mindset to understand that we're covered. We're covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, but angels are around us. This is in the unseen realm that you can't see, but they're there and, and they're there to protect us. And not only that, but it says here, he wants us to enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full until the till until it overflows. You mean to tell we can prosper in the time of this pandemic? You mean to tell me that we can be at a, 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 a peace during the time of this pandemic? You mean to tell me we can go about our business knowing that we have a shield and a covering over us? Yes, I'm saying that in Jesus' name. And yes, the word of faith said that's the promises that he has for us, but we do you have faith for it. That's the thing, because it's according to your faith. It's according to your faith. So our faith in God's word is how we receive the promises of God in this life and also the next. I'm giving you a challenge, giving you a challenge today. We have to exercise our faith. What are you confessing? Are you, and you need what? Listen, my confidence is that I believe that God, amen, is not only a healer, but he's a protector. And not only that, but God will create provisions for us that during this time that we won't lack anything, but we will maintain what God has for us. And when he said increase is coming our way, then I say increase, be it unto me according to your word. Because we want to make sure we're confessing what God's word says, having in confidence in God that he's still able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all, you can ask or think according to the power of covenant that's working in your life. God said, I've already got it covered. I already got it fixed. I already got it planned out for you. But you got to come through me in order for you to receive that. And you can't come through, through me unless you believe that I'm able to do for you what you can't do for yourself. And then you can't come to me and stay in me if you don't confess me as being Lord over that situation, working it out on your behalf. And then you can't even obtain what I have for you if you don't follow the instructions through obedience so I can manifest the thing that you have I have for you in this life as well as the next. Listen, God wants you to enjoy your life during the time of this pandemic. Pandemic. You say, well, how can I do that? Be thankful. First of all, say, thank God. Amen. Don't, no, don't be just caught up in what everybody else is saying. Speak kingdom talk. Amen. Amen. Talk about how God has been good to you and how he's kept you. Watch over your family. Watch over your kids. Thanking God for you getting employment, unemployment when you thought you weren't going to get unemployment. Amen. Thank God for how he has kept you, amen, out of harm's way. And thank God for how he's protecting your family and your loved ones. There's a lot to be thankful for. And that's all the result of our confession and our confidence in God. And that distributes and show forth that we do have faith. Because faith, amen, is a part of the currency in the kingdom. 
So I pray that you got something out of this word today. I'm telling you, I'm using my faith. I don't know about you, amen. You know, I'm just using it and I'm confessing each day. I'm getting my mind, amen, wrapped around what he promised me and believing that my life is going to be much better than it was yesterday and that the promises of God are yea and amen. And therefore, I'm kind of trying to find out what the obedience is. If you got anything that I need to do to line my obedience up, I want to make sure I get in alignment with that because I don't want the enemy to steal or kill or destroy my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as a born again believer. So I hope you got something out of this word today. I love you today. I'm encouraged. Amen. I hope you're encouraged. Amen. I want to pray for you now as we begin to dismiss. Amen. So I'm thanking you God once again for being a part of this broadcast. So Father, we thank you even now for our time together. We pray for these kings and priests that are called by your name. And Father, you said our faith is more precious than gold as though it was tried by fire. Father, therefore, the value, the value system of our faith is tied to our confidence in you, our confession, and our obedience. Father, help us to talk faith talk, Father. Help us to understand, amen, where our obedience lies. Does it lies to what people are saying, or is it in alignment with your word so we can have the great, great, amen, the right conduct and attitude and behavior to receive what you have for us. So, Lord, we break the power of the enemy, amen, trying to divert us from faith, and we break his power even now in Jesus' name, and we thank you for aligning us, amen, with the choices that we make will bring about the results that we need through Jesus Christ as we understand to walk in the realm of faith. So, Lord, I pray even now that if you lack anything in terms of provision, that you make it available to your people, even in Jesus' name. And I release my faith in accordance to your word and through the word of faith that you make it so for them. If they need protection in any way, amen, provide that for them. And I ask that you would do that because this is what you've already promised, God. And lastly, Lord, I pray even now that you would help us in our obedience in terms of serving you and not serving ourselves. And, Lord, we forever thank you and give you praise and glory and honor for this. In Jesus' name we pray and you should say amen so we love you guys amen so pastor Teresa we send our love thank you guys before I leave I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers amen thank you for being faithful and making the sacrifice amen amen for your husband I mean for your for your children amen for your wife amen and for your family amen so thank God for all the fathers amen and make sure amen you take care amen the fathers today those who are listening and we thank you for our time together in Jesus name so you be blessed highly favored and we'll see you soon in Jesus name amen